Greetings and welcome to In-Depth, I'm DK Rosta. The Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival is fast approaching and filmmaker Lugeria Davis, whose work Black Barbies will be featured, joins us to talk inspiration, representation and her artistic process. Thank you for joining us, Ms. Davis. I want to ask you, though, from Fort Worth, Texas, practical aspirations by force. How does someone earning a double major in electrical engineering and computer science make the decision to be led by their art? Um, well, you know, I did change my major from electrical engineering to, um, and computer science to filmmaking. Um, and so when I moved to LA in 2011 and stayed with my aunt, um, you know, being a filmmaker and a storyteller, and I'm listening to her tell me about, you know, working at Mattel for 45 years and being on that first Barbie line. Um, you know, I think I, I, I know a good story when I hear one. <laughs> um, she's telling me about that. She's like, why not make a, a, a black Barbie? Why not make a Barbie that looks like me? And um, I was struck by um, the fact that Black Barbie has a story. Um, Black Barbie has a story too. And so that's what led me to want to tell my aunt's story and Black Barbie's story and all the women that um, helped bring her to us in 1980, which are um, my aunt Beulah Mae Mitchell, um, Kitty Black Perkins um, would be the designer of the very first Black Barbie who um, was released in 1980. But it's one thing to say, okay, well, yes, you know a good story, and yes, you're going you're in film school, but what are some of the things that just kind of lit that fire and said, I need to, well, first of all, this story needs to be told, and I think I'm the person to do it. Um, <clears throat> again, that connection um, with my aunt, and then also it's kind of like a personal story in the sense of growing up not really loving to play with dolls. Um, and so, you know, I kind of explore that. We go on a journey in the film, um, how I go from someone who did not enjoy playing with dolls to someone who has a better understanding in the sense of, um, I think, you know, I hated dolls and I didn't understand why my aunt had so many black dolls. And I think my approach to the process was, I set out to understand why they were so important to her. Um, and I think hate stems from a lack of understanding sometimes. And so once I set out to understand um, why she loved black dolls, I found that um, why it was so important to have black dolls and why it was so important to have her there on that assembly line when the first black or the first Barbie came out in 1959. And to be able to ask the question, why not make a black Barbie? Why not make a Barbie that looks like me? And then once I started to really get into the history and unpack the history of black Barbie, um, you know, I learned that it took 21 years before we would get the very first black Barbie. And, you know, I was struck by the first time I felt like I was truly relating to a doll, like I was relating to Black Barbie's journey, like she's a piece of plastic. Um, and it took, you know, 21 years to be worthy of the Barbie brand name. Um, and that's navigating the white, you know, Barbie landscape. Um, just imagine what it's like to be flesh and blood Black woman navigating in this world. Um, so I felt that it was important to tell, um, my aunt's story, Black Barbie's story, um, all the, the Black women, 
um, and other voices that we hear in the film, um, you know, we can say representation matters, but the film really shows um, why it matters. And when representation is really, you know, done in a way that is somewhat organic and authentic, like what it can do. And just that, that the power of what it is able to do. But I want to go back into mm -hmm. some of your, your, your formative or your, your training, thank you, because some people say that no knowledge is wasted. So in terms of your process as an, as an artist, as a creative, uh, are there carryovers from the original training to life in media art and beyond that you would have kind of tapped into to help tell the story? Um, you know, absolutely. I think um, as far as having a, a background in engineering and computer science, um, the film industry is very technical. Um, there are things that you have to think about in terms of how you're going to shape the story, um, logistics, cameras, you're going to use lighting, um, having a, an understanding of all of those elements. I found that I brought a lot of the sensibilities. I wasn't afraid to, um, you know, dive into the technical aspects of filmmaking. And when you really get into like film, you have to measure focal length, distance. Um, and now with our digital cameras, you know, there's sensors that can have different color range, cameras that shoot better in low light. Um, editing, that's a whole thing, software. Um, so yes, it's a very technical um, field and what is I found to be more suitable to me than computer engineering and electrical science um, is, or electrical en engineering, computer science, is that those are very rigid disciplines. Um, and I'm also a very creative person, um, left and right brain. And so what I was able to do with the film industry and um, was, to be able to marry both of those, um, being able to bring in the, the math and manage. Um, I work as a line producer. I worked as a line producer before jumping into the creative. So managing budgets, figuring out, solving problems, um, logistics, all of the things that go into film production, I knew how to do coming into this and that background in, um, the math and science has helped me very much on that journey. And then with filmmaking, I get to marry both that side and the creative. I get to tell stories um, um, with beautiful images. And so um, it's amazing to be able to, to marry the two. And I remember someone talking about that marriage of left and right brain because they deal more with art administration as almost as though being able to speak two different languages and bring people to a meeting ground in the middle. But I'm wondering though, in terms of marrying that art and science, some people may want to step away from something that is based in, in fact. It is, it's, it's coming from a factual point because then you have to work how much of that truth am I going to put into this piece that has a finite time? What was that experience for you in terms of like, yes, this is the story and we want to remain true to the story, but we also, we're doing it within the confines and the parameters of this timeline of uh, the budget that you're dealing with and some other challenges that you may have faced. Oh yeah, it was hard. I'm not, I'm not gonna <laughs> um, sugarcoat it in the sense of saying, oh, you know, it took 10 years just to raise the, the funds. And during that 10 years, I was able to research and develop um, the story um, in a way that definitely, if I would have been able to raise the funds, um, you know, five years into it, it would be a different film. So, um, I, I felt like I was able to make a better film. And so thinking in terms of 
but 10 years, it's a long time. Um, I grew as a filmmaker and trusting the process and having a better understanding of what it means to navigate, um, as Black Barbie did, you know, navigate in an industry where, um, you know, it takes our stories um, to be more relevant. There needs to be something like what was happening in 2020 to come to pass, um, which, you know, turned out perfectly in the sense of we were able to release the film in 2023 um, and kind of capitalize off of being a part of the Barbie conversation. You know, I think we're additive to that conversation. Um, we, in our film, you'll see, you know, things that you don't get to see um, in that film. And so you can go and have, you know, a little fun over there and come over and have a little fun and learn a little something um, with us over here with Black Barbie. And so um, I think in the sense of this is my very first Black or documentary, and that's a different type of storytelling altogether. Um, and you can go into it with as much preparation um, as you possibly can, but you also have to be open to the process of it growing um, organically. Um, as you talk to people, um, you discover things like when you watch our film, you'll see something about, you know, the Watts Rebellion and how that, you know, brought about the Shindana Toy Company, Operation Bootstraps, um, and how that toy company really changed the landscape for Black toys um, and really proved that there was a market for um, what they were selling and made it possible for um, other bigger toy companies to kind of, you know, duplicate that model and tap into that market. Um, and so that was something that was not um, initially a part of the story, but I had so many people um, within um, our interview space talking about this that I had to do a deeper dive and um, gain a better understanding of what that meant, having that part of history um, and what that meant for Black Barbie, what that meant for Mattel deciding to, um, you know, released the very first Black, um, Black Barbie in 1980 and um, to move forward with other um, Black Barbies and other ethnic Barbies um, after that. So Black Barbie really kind of opened the door for there to be um, the, the Barbies that we see today. That are, and, um, and speaking of moving forward, we're going to move forward and take a short break. We come back, we continue this conversation. We are speaking with Legeria Davis about representation and doing so through Black Barbies. Uh, stay with us, we return with more. Welcome back. We are speaking with a filmmaker, Legeria Davis, and talking about her film, her documentary, Black Barbies, looking at representation through that medium. I feel as though we, we, we had the big half, and now we're going to have the small half, Legeria. But at the same time, though, looking at the 10 years it took for you to raise the resources to implement this project, and thinking about that in the context of the 21 years that it would have taken to get Black Barbie kind of implemented. I want to ask about your experience and talk to me a little bit about the relationship between internship, mentorship, and representation. How you find those three, those three touchstones kind of influencing each other, thanks. Well, hopefully, um, when you mentioned internships, we're looking more at paid opportunities for, um, you know, people to learn about a certain craft. And then um, mentorship is, you know, having someone to, um, you can call on in that space to be able to um, mentor you as you kind of go through the, maybe the same process um, a similar process that they went through um, 
coming up and they can offer sage advice. And um, I think for our film, what we see um, in that is, you know, we have my aunt Beulah Mae Mitchell, who was one of the first um, Black, she was the second Black um, person to work in Mattel's corporate offices. She went from the assembly, assembly line into Mattel's corporate offices, which kind of laid the groundwork. Um, she was friends with Ruth Handler. Um, and so that kind of enabled Mattel to kind of, you know, feel comfortable with bringing in their very first um, Black doll designer, Kitty Black Perkins, um, in 1976. And from there, you know, her and my aunt, you know, Kitty was already thinking, like, don't you think they should have, like, a Black doll with Black features? Like, shouldn't there be? And, um, you know, four years after she became um, their very first Black woman doll designer, we got the first Black Barbie. And through her be being the very first and designing Black Barbie and designing all of these um amazing Barbies um, at Mattel. She got a lot of press and um, she was featured in magazines and newspapers and a young woman by um, the name of Stacy McBride Irby, her dad saw Kitty in the LA Times and was like, yo, there's this, this woman, she looks like you and she's doing the very thing that you want to do. You should go for it. And so Stacy um, goes to design school, and Kitty ends up hiring her. Um, and Stacy and mentors Stacy. Um, you know, Stacy in our film is like, I learned everything I um, I know about doll design from Kitty Black Perkins, and she would go on to design the 30th anniversary Black Barbie. And so we have this really, you know, rich um, legacy story um, showing how representation works. Like, Stacy saw it. She, If you can see it, you can be it. And there she was being hired by um, the woman she saw in the newspaper when she was a teenager. And so... Um, I think it's, I can't believe even after all this time, I still get a little emotional about it. Um, but these are the stories that we need to hear more of. Um, and this is, you know, the, the thing that we need to, to see more of, um, especially when it comes to um, diverse communities. You know, and it's, defi and it's um, definitely something to get emotional about and pride. If, if it runs the full gamut of the spectrum in terms of emotions, but if you can see it, you can be it. That that gem, I think, is something I want to riff off of the last question in the minute that we have left. What do you want the person seeing Black Barbies to take away? What what do you hope it, the, is the impact, the ultimate impact of this project? You know, I get that question a lot, and I think there's a lot to unpack in the film, but I definitely just want um, the, the audience to celebrate these women and to not take for granted, you know, the intergenerational stories um, and having just kind of a better understanding of what these little things mean. Um, it seems so small when you think about it. Um, it really does. But as you can see, when you're watching our film, the impact, what it meant, what it means to me, you know, Black Barbie, um, the doll is kind of validation of my aunt, Kitty Black Perkins, Stacy, you know, being seen and heard um, in a space where they're often times silent. And I feel like Black Barbie, a documentary for me, is, you know, that same kind of validation. Um, and don't discount what your kids are playing with. Um, yes, see the film, um, 
and I hope you're inspired and um, and if you're not inspired, then I hope you learned something um, that you didn't know before. <laughs> And we want to thank you for staying the course and evolving in your craft, following this story and that that you have put so much work into, Ligeria Davis, and reminding you that Black Barbie will be screened as part of the Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival on September 22. Do not miss it. This has been In Depth with me, DK Ronster. Thank you so much for joining us.